As we get ready to construct our first set of infrastructure as code, we just need to cover a few more basics before we begin. And we'll focus here on constructs and execution. And in particular, we will cover providers, resources, and provisioners. These are terms that you need to become very familiar with as you begin constructing your code and you'll know where to go for additional information. Finally, we'll cover Terraform execution. You've seen some of this already, but we just need to reinforce with a demo the plan, apply, and destroy mechanisms for Terraform. Let's begin by talking about providers. And at the heart of everything, a provider is responsible for understanding API interactions and exposing resources on your targets. Think of your targets, could be Azure, could be VMware. You know, those are options too, could be AWS, could be any number of providers available to you. If we go over to the Terraform documentation on their website and expand out the docs, scroll down, you'll see providers listed there and you'll see providers for all sorts of clouds and other options. So, you know, Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Azure, where we're gonna to focus today. If you go into the Azure provider, it will give you details on all of the data sources it understands, how to interact with them. Everything you could possibly want to know is pretty much going to be in this documentation section as you continue to you know, expand and cover other resources in your environment. But aside from the cloud providers, it could be other things as well, like Chef or GitHub, GitLab, you know, that you want to interact with resources on those providers as well. And this is essentially the, the basis and why you need providers in Terraform. Moving on to resources, this is where we actually define the objects that we want to create in our environment. And it helps to understand the syntax that these are created in. First of all, we have our component that we're declaring. So if we were talking about a provider, we would say provider up front. In this case, we want, we're saying we want to build a resource. So we, we say resource. Then we talk to the provider that's going to provide the resource. So in this case, the provider for Azure, because we're using the ARM series of Azure now. No, no one's really using Classic anymore. And so we look at Azure RM as our provider. Then we define our resource type. In this case, a resource group is the example. So if I'm just creating a resource group in Azure, the provider is Azure RM, and the type of resource I'm creating is a resource group. And then I give it a name, and this is a name to Terraform. This isn't the name that's going to be created in Azure. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. This is the name that's referenced throughout your code. If you want to refer back to this object, in my case, I'm calling this one Skylines RG. Anything else that depends on Skylines RG, I would use this name to refer back to this resource group. Then we have provisioners as well. So when a resource is initially created, provisioners can then be executed to initialize that resource. So think about it as the provider sets up the resource, but perhaps we want to execute something inside of that resource. And this could be local or remote execution. A provisioner is the mechanism that we actually use to initiate that once the resource is up and running. Now, with that said, how do we execute in Terraform? And you saw this in the sort of teaser video at the beginning, but essentially we've got to plan our deploy first of all, execute using Terraform apply, and destroy using Terraform destroy. And you can force some of these things, you don't have to ask for the prompts, but I encourage you just to use the commands as they are to begin with Terraform plan, Terraform apply, Terraform destroy, and confirm as you go through. Anytime you build something, do a plan before. This will tell you what it's going to do. It'll check if it's even going to work for you before you go ahead and do the execution. You know, just, it's just common sense, obviously, to do the plan and then execute. And then finally, when you're done with everything, you know, providing this isn't production, you know, items that you're deploying, you do Terraform Destroy, and that will clean up your environment, especially if you're using an Azure trial or something. You want to make sure you don't burn through all your credits. Just destroy when you're done. Just remember, you can always just deploy it again. So if you're halfway through some of the demos and trying to get things up and running, and you sort of you know have to go out or something, just go ahead and destroy if you did deploy something, and then rework your code when you get back, and then you know plan, apply again, and then you can get your environment back up. And, and that's why I say it's just so powerful for demonstration purposes as well.